was in LA, but I was still doing my, my New York thing. Mm -hmm. But as I got involved in the community and I saw there was so much to do with people like Jose Luis and Evelina who are mm -hmm. gods, you know, they were already out there banging on doors and doing things and I, I, I attached myself to them because I thought we could all do something together. You know, I was the newbie in town. And uh, so it was being born again as a, as a Chicano. It, it, it was a whole new chapter and a whole new life that uh, I've been doing for, what, 25, 30 years now, I guess. So it was very much a definitive moment. And I was wondering what uh, that Mexican restaurant is in New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now there's five. You know, oh yeah, now every corner chimichangas, every corner. Uh, it was downstairs in the village, and, 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 and we uh, thought there was a Spanish, but really Spanish, uh, Delicatess on 14th Street and said chorizo. We were, yes! And folks had to run in there, but it was not like our chorizo. <laughs> it was not ours, so yeah. It, it, it was really, there was one Mexican restaurant, if you can believe that. I would audition for things, and, 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 and the casting people would say, Thank you, but you're too Mediterranean. <laughs> All they knew was I was something that didn't Different. look like somebody else, but yeah, it was completely foreign. Okay, over here. So, uh, not, Speak up because people sorry. in the back need to hear you. So not much has changed in Hollywood. Uh, so what is it going to take? <laughs> the second coming. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, things have changed. It is much better. There's no question. But like I tell people, when you go to, you know, 5% from sub 50, you don't go out and break a piñata. You know, there's still, it's just like the, like the LGBT community. Of course, the strides we made are <coughs> but at the same time, honey, you go to some cities in this country, it's 1950. Mm -hmm. So, you know, both communities have made huge leaps, and, and we have to stop and celebrate that. But there's still a long, long, long way to go. I don't know, there's not a magic answer. There are still, you know, I would say it takes all, like I said, take all kinds. We have some friends, and I won't name them because we all know who they are. You know, they're still in the 60s, and yeah, we'll bring down the studios this day, we'll do that. <laughs> and we're going, <laughs> but you know what? We need, no, we need that voice too. You know what I'm talking about. We need, <laughs> we need that voice too. You need all kinds. You need the one that's diplomatic and walks into the network and does it from the inside. You need the one who's out there beating down the doors. And you need all kinds. It's, it's no single answer how it's going to change. It will change. It has changed. But it has to change more, no question. Okay. Over here. Um, you talk about the intersection of art and activism, and it seems to me like here in Los Angeles, art has always been a part of the activism, at least the history that I know, being a newcomer Absolutely. Um, from Absolutely. 2007. And I'm wondering if that kind of intersection, if you saw it happen in, in New York, or if you think it happens in other cities, or is this unique to here? No, I believe it does happen and other places. I was not aware of it in New York City because New York has, has, everything is interconnected and intersection and you know, everything is, so it was not clearly defined. Uh, but yes, l well, l let's face it, Diego Rivera was doing the murals for Rockefeller and they nearly had a heart attack and Siqueiros was out here right on Rivera Street with America Tropical raising hell. So, you know, uh, art has always been, always, I think, been, been used to make a statement and I, Look at all the art that came out of the Chicano movement. You know, thank God, uh, uh, the Teatro Campesino, they have a lot. You know, the, those early posters and the graphics and uh, banners and paintings that the, that the uh, young artists did. I'm sorry to say the UFW has not been quite as good about archiving that. And I understand they have other fish to fry, but a lot was lost. A lot was lost. And of course, in New York, you know, you have a much more prominent um, Puerto Rican community. And so a lot of that art and activism that you're talking about, um, because it was a critical mass and because they were fighting their own battles, really took place. Um, you know, we have um, Pregones here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> spotlights are right much of that. Um, Puerto Rican traveling theater. And then you had Intar with, you know, then the Cuban people and my people came in. And so um, it's only been in fairly recent times that there has been a real 
uh, prominence of the Chicano community in New York that has been fairly recent. Yeah, the last and quite big. Decade. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's yeah. huge. Right, right. So, okay. I, I One more. I wanted to we? say something about if it has changed. Uh, the, the first time we did a fundraising, you produced it. Yeah. Tell him about the beans. About what? The fees? Well, Jose Luis, <laughs> I, I, I'm on the board with Jose Luis Navalina and some very strange people. <laughs> Gil Cedillo, God bless him, he was on the board with us, right? And, and, and Luis says, I can't, I wish I could do his accent. Damn, we must, we must do something around the Dia de Muertos. Nobody does anything here. Now, of course, today, it's everywhere, but honestly, he was the very first one, 1989. He said, we have to do something around that, and you know, we could do a show inside the theater, but outside in the, in the building, you know, the lobby there, we do the, the, the typical, the tortillas, the mariachi, calavera, taca, boom, boom. And I was casting a film at Disney at the time, and they had decided that that part would be perfect for a Latino stand-up. We're talking 1989. There weren't a lot. So I, I had done this nationwide search, and I found a whole bunch of them. Culture Clash was still up in San Francisco. Uh, George Lopez was just starting. There were a few all scattered. So I said, why don't we do a very hip, cool, all Latino comedy night? There had never been such an animal. And the juxtaposition with the traditional outside. And, uh, and then we'll get celebrities to do it. And we did, whoa, what, six or seven every year. It grew huge. Huge, and uh, I remember one comic coming backstage. That first one we did, he says, "My God, it's so great to be on a, you know, on a bill with eight other Latino comics. I'm always the only one." You know, so all that is there. So yeah. Yeah, but the story was uh, we were just a company. Why didn't you stop me ten minutes ago? I'm exhausted. Story. <laughs> no. The story was good, don't you think? It's all right. It's all right. But it's a good cockamamie story. No, the, remember, <laughs> you tell it. We were, we were just like a company inside, and they, the, the owners had just let us use the theater. And we were feeding the people. Oh, yeah. We had, you know, we had to find people to give us food. And then, <laughs> in the middle of the fundraiser, that comes to because at least we had to get more frijoles. We ran out of frijoles, ran around the street to the Mexican restaurants to see if somebody came to Mexico. We had, so we, had, we had Rita Moreno, Paul Rodriguez, Chief Marino, all hosting, and he and I are running down the street looking for people. Honest. <laughs> <laughs> so the point, it has changed because now we run the journey. <laughs> now we run the building. Now we send, we send uh, other people. Okay, uh, let, let, oh, let's just do testing and let's get. Oh, we did. Okay, we did. Here. There was somebody I up here. Yeah. 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 Somebody up there. All right. Okay, yeah. got it. Um, you talked about um, when you started casting, um, how you made an effort to bring in um, other Latin artists, and um, and can you just talk for a second about um, some of the trials of when you sort of got to like you know slip in some um, Latin actors into things that where they were um, asking for. Um, well, then there was a big uh, a Time Magazine article, uh, Time Magazine uh, in the late 80s, I forget, Eddie almost was on the cover. I think La Bamba had just come out, and they were talking about the Latino explosion. Yeah, we've been through, what, four or five, right? <laughs> this was the first, Eddie was in there, and I was casting, and they, uh, they quoted me in the story in Time Magazine, and I, I ran across it recently, I thought, I could have said this quote two weeks ago. Because if I said, well, the, the, the producer said, I would see Latinos, but the casting person doesn't bring them in. And the casting person says, I would see Latinos, but the director doesn't ask for them. And the director says, well, I would see Latinos, but the producer never, you know, and everyone's busy saying, you know, the, the truth is, actors should come in, uh, with some exceptions, but, you know, and, and like, well, I'm saying if it says, you know, Joe Blow, uh, his name doesn't have to be Blow. If a Latino actor comes in, why can't he just play that part? You know, why can't you see? Yeah, and it's, it's true. A friend of mine just directed a huge ABC pilot, one hour, takes place in L.A. today, and I'm sitting there at the screening at his lovely home, and I'm watching and I'm waiting, as we all do every time we see like that. Where's a Latino? Where's a Latino? The whole, not one. It took place in L.A. today, and there, I would say, I don't need to see a show with 20 brown people in it. I don't. I just want to see a brown person in, a, in any, any, any situation, just like we are. 
I don't need to have a whole Latino show, honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, I just don't understand it. So I don't know what it is. I don't have an answer. Mm -hmm. They don't see them. They don't bring them in. They, they're not good enough. I don't know. Robert Vitran, let's talk about Robert Vitran. Mm -hmm. Handsome, sexy, fabulous actor. Why is he in one of those, Madam Secretary? He looks like he worked in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you, I want to hear this beautiful lady talk. Okay. So um, let's get back to some of the themes that you brought out in your presentation. I think that one of them is really about the, um, how you melded these two extremely important activist roles to you, the LGBTQ perspective with your Latino perspective. When do you think that they um, can work together and when do you think that you lose perspective by trying to meld too many different agendas into one um, activist agenda? Damn, we should have kept up with the question. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Chicano who's gay, or are you a gay man who's a Chicano? Well, I'm both, you know, and, and that's one thing. So in a way, I don't see them as two causes. For me, it's one cause, and I have met so many, I had no idea there were so many gay Latinos. There's tons of them, you know, when I'm old. <laughs> really, they're like a bad rash, they're everywhere. <laughs> Young, talented, smart, you know, marvelous young people, and, 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 and they happen to be Latino, they happen to be gay. You know, that, that second and third. First, who, what are they? They're smart, they're talented, they're gifted. And oh, they're gay and they're Latino. That's what the truth is. Now, how it's perceived, of course, is here comes a Latino, or here comes somebody who looks gay. You know, so so I don't see it as two different things. I, I don't. I well, see it as one. Well, I think that's a healthy perspective, and I think going back to the first um, gentleman's question, I think that a newer generation is embodying that more, totally. and you're going back to your re um, recovering your roots, perhaps. But it's yeah. really about how do you feel as a human being, and what does that, um, how does that manifest in your art? That's right. Right? That's right. So let's get back um, a little bit about politics because um, obviously there were distinct um, periods of your life when a political act sort of, you know, just changed the course of your life. And I guess what I'm going to ask is about current politics. We have been more and more fairly um, proactive in certain parts of the country, including Los Angeles, in electing. Um, officials who are Latino and now openly officials gay. who are openly gay. Um, at the same time, it's my opinion that even people in this community where arts and entertainment are such a huge part of the economy and of the, the profile and of the identity of the community, those very same elected officials that are chosen by our people oftentimes because of the numbers of who votes for them really don't take any kind of interest or activist role in making sure that there are Latinos and that there are, well, there's more gay penetration, obviously, in, in Hollywood and in some of the arts than the Latino, as we've been talking about. But what do you think that is the um, responsibility or the role of our elected officials to be much more proactive in a community such as LA that depends so much on arts and entertainment for our well-being? Well, I, I think that there's no question that uh, uh, they need to do more. Some are doing more. Some consider them two hot button issues and they don't want to lose the next election. And whereas the Latino voting power is quite strong, God knows the gay. Mm -hmm. Not only is the gay voting bloc strong, we have money. Mm -hmm. I don't, but uh, most of the people, they do. You know, they know, they have money, and that's why they flattered Geff and all those people. Those are big dollars. And let's face it, in the end, that's what counts for people. Dollars. That's the bottom line. 
You know, that's the bottom line. And I think it's not just the politicians, but you know, I find the industry very homophobic still, and yeah. very sexist still. It is, you know, I don't say everybody, but right. it's still very, very powerful. Like, it's still very sexist, it's still hard for women. Uh, and, and, uh, and even though there's a lot of gays, more gays in positions of power, it, it's a very tight, tight group. So I think, I think they're still afraid of it, you know, as, as important as it's gotten. You know, in terms of voting, in terms of dollars that they can get from those two communities, I think it still frightens them. It's still new, and I think part of people are getting more frightened because of numbers. That's why I think people that racism is getting even worse. Which, by the way, I still think too often racism in this country is considered a black and white issue. Mm -hmm. It is. Every time we hear about racism, it's black and white. Mm -hmm. Racism is very strong and very alive for people of, of other colors. Um, and I think that, uh, I have no idea where I was going with that. <laughs> oh, and it was so good. I had a, a wrap-up thought. Oh, well, it'll come to me. But, but yeah, it, it, it's, uh, no, Hollywood itself is still, as you can yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that, um, and you, you made a statement earlier that, you know, there are, like, the big Latino wave is coming, and then you don't hear anything for 12 years. Um, <laughs> What do you think is, um, obviously, when my family came to the United States in 1961, there was no Spanish language networks back then. Right. And right. so my grandmother, who spoke no English, could only watch soap operas. She couldn't watch novellas. Now there's a huge and very powerful and very rich um, whole network system, in several of them, Univision, Tel oh, yeah. Telemundo, et cetera. But there's still a bit of a disconnect, I think, between um, younger artists who are trying to do a bilingual kind of path and those that are just um, monolingual Spanish or monolingual uh, English. And where do you see the future of that whole dynamic going? It's very complicated, and that's part of the problem. It's just like everyone, if I sit on one more panel or, or get invited to one more study to, how do we read for Latino market? <laughs> Really, and I'm happy they're happening, but enough for the studies, just do it already. Um, it's, not, it's not a Latino market. I mean, how do you, are you talking about a Spanish language market? Are you talking about a newly arrived immigrant? Are you talking somebody that, that's so assimilated, we, we, we just go to the movies, you know? We don't have to see a Latino theme thing. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's very complex. And that's part of the problem. And language is a biggie. I especially believe that when you see, why don't I point up to this? Not a TV <laughs> uh, and watching television, you still see very few Latinos. You still see, and it's one thing to not see them in a lead role that unfortunately you're almost used to. But commercials. But I suspect it's because the, the, the McDonald's and the whatever corporations are still being convinced by ad agencies that the only way to reach the Latino is in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So if they've already put you know, a, a, a Spanish language commercial on McDonald's, then we're taken care of. Yeah. So on this one, make sure we have an African American, an Asian, and now Pakistani, uh, uh, Middle Eastern, and still no Latinos. They're still on. It, it, it also, in those areas, has to do with the market. China's the next big television market, so make sure there's a Chinese uh, in, in, a, in one of the lead roles. Uh, India is a huge market, so when we go to sell this series, you better have one or two Pakistani or Indians in there. They don't care, they don't care. So, you know, Latin America is yesterday. It is. In that world, in I that believe. World. I believe. Right. And do you see a dichotomy between um, theater and the people who are Latino who are making theater, device theater, theater about their own issues of community's issues, which are, you know, as you just pointed out, the issues that exist for the Chicano movement are vastly different than those that exist for uh, a Puerto Rican community or a Dominican community or Cuban community. Um, do you see that because this is a theater conference and a theater festival, um, but so much of your work has been on more commercial theater and producing for television and, and mass media. Where do you see 
those two kind of paths converging or not? Um, and do you think that that's even something that, you know, especially young people, now that you're an academic, uh, <laughs> Um, you know, when, when you approach young people, when people ask you questions about their career path, um, how do you steer them? I know that when we talked before this, this conversation, we had a chat and you said, you know, I'm afraid, you said, I'm afraid that I've painted myself into a stereotypical corner of, you know, first I was gay and then, so that, that circumscribed what I had to do. And then on top of that, now I'm Latino, and that further shrunk my universe. How do you tell people, young people especially, to navigate these 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 paths? Because you know, young people now, especially, you know, maybe not if you graduated from Los Angeles Community College, but people who are going to four-year universities are coming out with these massive debts. I know. Massive I debts. Know. So. Well, you know, if, if, if somebody comes up to your class afterwards, what is your advice? What do you tell well, First of all, I want to back up a little bit and say, say that, that Latinos in theater are doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. Much more interesting, braver, personal, mm -hmm. you know, very much so. It's just so small, mm -hmm. you know, pregones. Uh, 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 all the theaters, you know, it's, we all know, look, Jose Luis and Evelyn are doing amazing things here. People will come to the music center, they won't go 20 more feet to see something really, really interesting. So that's a real issue, and I don't quite know what the answer is there. I guess getting stars to get, you know, if you get a big star, it, that always brings people. So uh, that is still a problem there, but I do think there's much more uh, 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 complex and much more interesting going on in theater. Um, and that's always been my first love. I, you know, I can't, I can't answer that per se because they are so different, those two worlds. And especially in LA, many times, I don't say always at all, but many times, too many young people just look at being seen in some little theater in order to get that TV series, right. you know. It's not like in LA where they'll do something in a little church somewhere just because they want, they need to act and they want to be before a live audience, you know. They're just such different worlds and, and not all actors can navigate them all, you know. I saw a young lady who's very gifted recently in a television thing, but it was like she was playing Madison Square Garden. I'm like, honey, you're on television. <laughs> you know, you could, you, know, you could tell. You could tell that she was used to, to stage. I don't blame her, I blame her director for saying, take it down, you know. So uh, not everyone can navigate all those, but you know, you really need to. You need to do as much as you can. You need to be able to do theater. You need to be able to do film. You need to be able to do commercial. If you can, a voice if you can. You have to diversify. You know, there's no, there's no single advice. Everybody has to find their own path. They, they, it's their personal path as well as their professional path. You know, I, as I say, I was just doing regular mainstream stuff for 20 years. And then once I started doing Latino, it served very well. Because when that market finally caught up, there was nobody there, and I was doing everything. But when that entity who would hire me to do a big uh, a Latino theme thing for PBS or NBC, when they were doing the Oscars or the Emmys, I didn't. They wouldn't call you. No. So I felt that started to limit me, and now that's why I said the other day, no, not bad enough I'm in the Latino market, now I'm in the gay Latino market. <laughs> And next, I'm gonna do gay Latinos five, six, and under. <laughs> but I have to follow what I want to do. I'd love to be making a fortune doing the Kardashians, but I'd shoot myself. I just couldn't do or it. Or then. <laughs> or then. <laughs> no, no, they're lovely, lovely people. No, I. Uh, no, you have to be happy. You have to fulfill yourself. Some people just fulfill making money. I don't judge. That's great. I wish I was like that. Believe me. No, I do. You know, hey, I can make a fortune doing this show. Who cares that it's nothing but a piece of whatever, and who cares, and not even that entertaining. They take the check, they go home, they're happy. I can't do that. I wish I could. I'm going to ask one more question, and then I think we should wrap it up, because believe it or not, I have to go on to another um, event.
for Islamic people. One of the things that I find really uh, very heartwarming or, or, or positive about this Encuentro is that the Latino Theater Company has this space, um, has the now the physical plant and has built a board that really does have some resources that has allowed them to flourish in here. But they've joined forces with um, the Latino Latina um, Commons, which is this organization that um, is I guess grounded or nurtured by Emerson College in, in uh, Boston. Interestingly, not so much Emerson College in Los Angeles, which is another story. Um, but, but what that evokes for me is the whole, um, the whole theme of building coalitions. Yes. And you absolutely. talk so much about you know, the fact that Cesar Chavez you know, joined the LBTG. Um, movement uh, in Washington and that that there was a real consciousness about um, about what are common what is common ground and common cause exactly. um, and I think that uh, some of that comes to the forefront in really tense times and very difficult periods we just um, Carrie and I just saw all the way, which is the second part of the um, Lyndon Johnson um, two-part. No, the Great Society. The Great Society. The first part. Sorry, all we're seeing uh, all the way in a uh, couple weeks. Um, but it talked about the coalitions between uh, the anti-Vietnam War uh, movement and the African American movement, and I just want you know. But then when things sort of seem like they're still that they're mellowing out a little bit. Right. That that angst and that coalition building sometimes, you know, you just go on with your life. Yeah, yeah. And I just want to get your thoughts about how do you keep those alliances strong and going and vital? And, you know, when you're busy, you know, picking up your dry cleaning because you have an appointment right. at Universal right. Studio, how, what do you think are the, um, the, the basic elements of why those kinds of coalitions are imperative in order to move these sort of um, philosophically based common causes moving forward. They are, I think what's going on with Latino Theater now, with the, with the Latino Theater Alliance and the commons and all that is unbelievably fantastic because they're all doing the same thing all over the country. I always tell, look, first of all, it's all about relationships, isn't it? Everything, your whole career, it's relationships. And, and, and I, I tour you know, everywhere with my show and, and producing La Di Da. And I'm always saying, connect the dots, connect the dots. And, and I'm very happy that through my show, I've now found, I have all these little base camps. I have one in Mexico City, and I have one in New York, and Washington, you know, and you have these base camps of, of like persons, that you have the same visions, and you have the same, uh, 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 um, what, uh, work ethic, you know, and that you're responsible. And, 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 and the older I get, believe me, the less, ask for Armando, I get less patient. I have no patience for, for if you're not uber professional, and if you don't return an email, and if you don't return a call, I'm just not happy. I don't have time. Nobody does today, really. You know, oh, I didn't check my email for two days. Really? <laughs> You're not going to make it, honey. You know, you, you, no, you've got to stay on top of it. it you, you have to. You don't want to, but you've got to, really. And so those alliances and, and those uh, finding those, those like people is extremely important, and it will serve you well. You know, I'm thrilled to be able to extend a hand to young people like, uh, uh, like Armando, and I'm, I'm thrilled if they think that they can learn something from me. At the same time, my God, I learned something from these wonderful young people that I, I, I'm just so proud of them, you know. I nearly fainted when I was taught in UCLA and, 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 and Armando says, oh, I'm in a gay frat. There's a gay frat at UCLA? Oh my God, I couldn't believe it, you know. And, and so it's thrilling for me to have lived to see all this happen with young people. 
And next year there's going to be a gay Latino frat. <laughs> Five, six, and nine. Five, six, and nine. Yeah. I think that is a gay Latino frat, isn't it? It is now. It is. It is now. <laughs> it is now. No, it's, it's, I, I, I love me these talented young Latinos, and they have to, they really have to do it all, but connect those dots. I work hard at keeping relationships. You have to, you know that. You know, all of a sudden, I'll, my, my, my friend Tessie Board, we just met a few, what, maybe a year ago, and I just loved her. So I don't let her get away. She was at the Autry, and then she said she was leaving. I said, let me know where you are. I really like her, we keep her like, and maybe someday she can help me, and maybe someday I can help her. It's all about relationships, but you do have to work at it. Answer your emails. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, before we wrap up, if there's, is there any last parting thoughts that you want to share with this group? Remember, these are artists. These are artists, they're producers, so they have like the right brain and the left brain thing going on. Um, what are your parting thoughts for this group as you I think you just have to have faith. You really, I keep going, oh my God. You know, I go between, I have this important little show and, and I can still do it, and, and yes, and then the next day I'm like, really? Who cares? Who wants to see that old man run around on stage telling about it? Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, you, and then I go, no, no, there's something important there, and you have to really believe in your product, and you have to believe that you have something that you can bring to the table. Because if not, then you should be doing it. You know, I, I, and you just have to keep on your path. Keep on your path and believe in what you're doing. And I, I believe that it'll, it'll all come out as it's supposed to come out. And it'll happen when you're ready, right? That's good. Well, thank you, and thank you for asking.